And we are live. How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? How are y'all doing? Greetings, y'all. Greetings. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. I haven't came while I haven't come while I mean live in a while. Cause I'm still transitioning to living in the U.S. How are y'all doing? <clears throat> Let me wait a few minutes while folks come in. Hey, when you come, hey, when you guys come in, uh, when you guys coming in, hey, um, hey, Cosmo, how you doing? When you guys come in, let me know where you guys are coming in from. Let me know where you, which state you are in. Um, as you all know, I just came back to the U.S., so I'm still in transition. That's why you see me having my lives outside, because my hotel in my room, my kids are there and they're loud. They like to wrestle and jump and play. Some people think, thought it was being homeless. I'm not homeless. <laughs> Thank you, Cosmo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you guys. What's up, Quinn? Tennessee, Ohio. Okay. I used to be in Ohio. I I I live. Well, my ex-wife was from Ohio. Canton, Canton. No, oh, that place was just Memphis. Okay. Okay. New Orleans. New Orleans. Okay. Well, thank you for thank you all for joining me, man. Thank you all for joining me. Um, I'm in Georgia. I just came to Georgia, so um, this is my second time living here. I lived here. When I was first stationed in the military 25 years ago, you all know I'm retired military, right? I know I look like I'm not retired, but I'm retired. I'm actually reti retired military. I did 20 plus years in the military, so that's why you all be seeing me on here. Um, I did 20 plus years in the military, in the army. So I travel a lot. I'm always in different countries. Still, I'm not used to sitting still at home, so. That's why. St. Martin. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Angel. I'm from St. Vincent, by the way. Um, born in St. Vincent. Hello, Kathy. How are you doing? Hey, Lynette. How are you doing? North Carolina. I'll be in North Carolina next week to pick up my daughter. I have a, an older daughter in North Carolina. I have to pick her up because she, she's going to live with me for the, this school year coming. She's 10. So I'll be there. I'll be in North Carolina soon. Listen, man. Listen. I want to talk about something um, something very simple, but we don't think about um, so as you guys know, man, I, I speak on, um, hey, Faith, hey, Lynette, I speak on things from different angles, right, from different perspectives. And I think a lot of times, can you hear me properly? Can you hear me? I hope you can hear me. I speak on things from a different angle because I realize that many of us are looking at things from the same angle. And that's why many of us are so hurt. Many of us are so anxious. Many of us are so depressed because we look at things from the same angle all our life. And everybody meets, you know, all our friends and us have the same angles, you know, have the same perspective. That's why we have those friends because they share the same perspectives as us. Okay, good. Y'all can hear me. And, uh, and I think that's why we hurt for so long. I made a video just the other day and I was saying um, the reason why we can't heal, um, I, I was saying the reason why we can't heal it's because there's nothing wrong with us. A lot of us ain't got shit wrong with us, right? A lot of us ain't got nothing at all wrong with us. Hey, yeah, and, and I think that's why we can heal because we're looking to heal something that's not wrong. So we are looking, so we are getting more anxious, more angry, more irate, more sad because there's nothing to heal because we just go into life and life, you know, if you stump your toe, sometimes it's gonna hurt for a minute, but after a while the pain subsides and it disappears. But you, you know, if you complain and fight it and stuff, it's gonna stay for a long time. But if you realize that it's a part of the process, because you know, like when you stump your toe on the bed, that initial pain is just ridiculous. You, and like, it makes you stop for a while. It makes you freeze in your own same pain. You, you want to cry, but you know it's gonna die off in a few minutes. You know what I'm saying? It, like it's gonna subside. Well, this is just relationship. This is the same as, you know, when you talk about, you know, leaving someone or ghosting or when somebody ghosts you, when somebody break up with you. The initial pain. The initial pain, right? Hey, um, intent, uh, intently purposeful, how are you doing? You know, the initial pain is going to swoop your butt. And then after a while, you just... But many of us think that something is wrong because the initial pain it stays. The, you know, the initial pain is there. So many of us think that something is wrong. Something is wrong. I need healing. You don't need healing. You, you, you need to accept. So I have learned these things in my journey of awakening. I have learned some things and I begin to look at things differently. So that's why I come on here and I speak from a different angle. I don't speak from the, ba the same things that all these people speak about on the basic, obvious things about relationship. I don't speak if he cheated in this, if she cheated in that. I don't even talk about genders. I speak on us as a whole, human being. Because the issue is not about men 
or a woman. Hey, Suzanne, how are you doing? The issue is not about men or women. I promise you, it's really not. The issue is about we don't know what we are doing. We don't know what we are looking for. We don't know what we want. And we are conflicted in what we feel towards what we need. And many of us are going to what we feel. We are sucked into what we feel. If it feels good, if it feels like we miss somebody, if we feel like we want it, if it feels more attracted, if it feels more desired, that's what we want. Not about what makes sense. Not about compatibility. Not about what is best for us. It's about what feels the best for us. We gotta cut that crap out. And I think you know, a lot of times that's why we hurt so much. So many of us are, keep, you know, we're gonna keep falling in the same trap. Do y'all notice that? We go in the same trap, the same people does the same things to us over and over and over. I want to talk about relationships or relationships, I call it. Relationships. Emotions, right? Because many of us don't understand that these, emo these emotions, these feelings are effing, us, is effing with us. And again, since on my journey of enlightenment, I started this about 10 years ago. I have learned some things. I have practiced some things that if you just open your mind a little bit without judgment without thinking about what you knew all these years is right or wrong. If you just understand that perspectives is the way of healing. If you want to heal, perspectives is the way. Perspectives. If you look at things the same all your life, you're going to always be stuck. What's up, Michael? Seriously. If you look at things all your life the same way, you're going to always be stuck. You're going to learn to look at things differently from different angles. The different angles from different angles. And when you learn that, man, when you learn that, man, life opens up so much angles, so much perspective, so much freedom. Because the point is to have freedom. The point is to be free in your mind. And if you are free in your mind, your body, your external life, your internal life is all free. As within, so without. If you are free up in your mind, if you do the things that keeps you free. See, you can't be with somebody that you know that you shouldn't be with because you're not free. You begin to resist. You begin to have anxiety. You begin to feel and think and resist and resist. And the more you resist is the more you fight. The more you resist is the more you fight. So therefore, when you resist, understand. See, we don't understand that we are making ourselves sick. Because when you begin to resist and think and go against your own knowledge, when you go against what you know, you're going to always be busy up here. And when you're busy up here, your life is going to show for it. Your life will be busy. Your body will be sick. You're going to always feel drained and tired because you are divided. And you all know a nation divided against itself cannot stand. You know, somebody said unforgiveness. Let me tell you all about forgiveness. Let's talk about forgiveness for a second. Because I want us to see things at a different angle. Now, I know it's, good to, it's, it's, it's very important to forgive. Not for them, but for us. But let me tell you a different angle. Again, this is all based on perspectives. And truthfully, I don't really forgive many people. And the reason why I don't forgive many people is because I don't take many people seriously. I don't take it personal. When somebody does something, I don't think it's about me. So I don't have to forgive you. Oh, I don't have to hold on to it. Oh, I don't have to get angry about, you, uh, you know, about what you do. I don't have to be all this insecure and angry and sad because I don't take it personal because people really are doing things because of them. They are really doing things because of who they are. And sometimes when they do things, Ain't shit to do with us. Listen, I'm telling you guys, man. If you don't have to forgive, you don't hold on to unnecessary crap. If you don't take things personal, you don't have to hold on to unnecessary crap. Because you don't have that much room. You don't have, you only have enough room for one. You have eight. You only have enough room for one. But we carry in everybody's stuff. We carry in everybody's behavior. We carry in everybody's words. Everybody is suffering. Everybody's actions. We carrying them and then we think that, well, I'm drained. Of course you drain. Hey Chastity, how you doing? Look at you. Of course we drain. We're carrying everybody's stuff. We gotta drop them things off. Aim for us to carry. So I'm saying if you don't carry people's stuff, you ain't got to forgive. When somebody does something that they wanna do, what you gotta forgive them for? Seriously. Do we think about this? Have we ever thought about this before? If somebody is is I know, I know. Our egos get hurt. Oh my God, it's about me. It's, it's not about you. Remove yourself. You know, humble yourself. Sit, sit, sit your ass down. You know what I mean? It's something it ain't. Some things ain't about you. Just because I want to drink and I go out and get a drink, what I got to do with my girl or my wife or my friend? It ain't got shit to do with you. It's me. I want this. 
So therefore, I don't have to forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive and grudge and hold grudge and hold grudge. Listen, energy begins, energy needs to flow smooth. Energy needs to flow up and down, in and out from us easily, naturally, effortlessly. Energy needs to continue to flow easily. But when all these thoughts and grudges and anger, energy begin to be stagnant. Not the only one that's awakened. Yeah, Sherry, for real. But a lot of us, we, we find every reason to be sick. And you know what makes us sick? Our thoughts. The way how we feel, the way how we perceive life. The way how we fight. The way how we resist life. If somebody does something, what you got to forgive them for? It's they doing it. It's their life that they're affected. Their own karma. Their own bodies. Their own minds. Their own soul. It's not you. It only becomes you when you when you take on what they did. Many of us we can't figure that out. So we think I gotta even sometimes some of us are forgive I gotta forgive myself. Forgive yourself for what? What you wanna forgive yourself for? Don't flatter yourself. You ain't you ain't been here for that long. <laughs> listen, I'm listen, perspectives. You ain't been here for that long. Humble yourself. My my daughter is five years old and she does some ridiculous things. She falls and she trips and she don't forgive herself. For what? It's a part of the process. Hey, a and is a part of the process. What you got to forgive yourself for? You didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you had to, you had, listen, you had to figure it out for yourself. You had to know it. So maybe you had to experience it three, four times until it sunk in. That's when you know, okay, damn it, I know for a fact this is the truth. Or differently from me. You know, the, the, the truth is, though, um, Cosmo, people are not wired differently. We all wired the same. I mean, to be honest, it's one energy, one God, one creator. We all wired the same. The thing is, we are programmed differently because we are into this ego. We're into ourselves. We are too self... Uh, what was the word? We are too self... Uh, what, what is that word, people? What word I'm looking for? We all... Like, you know, like, when you're into yourself so much, we, we, we are too self... Lord, have mercy. What is that word, people? Help me out with a word. <clears throat> it's like we don't know how to look at things openly. We got to look at things about us. It's about me. If you did this, it's about me. If you cheat, it's about me. If you talk about this, it's about me. If you think this, it's about me. If you do this, it's about me. So we always hurt. Self-centered. Yes, that, that's the word. Self-centered. Thank you. Self-centered. We are too self-centered. And, and, and observe. Fact. That. That too, two perfect words. We are too self-centered and self-absorbed. So everything becomes about us. So self-involved. That, that, that too. That too. Hey, hey, call it. Hey, hey call it. But I'm just saying. It's, 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 it's just. We go down just like Holy Mary, Mary on a, on a cross. But listen though. We are always, everything is about us. Sometimes you have to realize and let people be who they are. Sometimes you have to remove that self and say, this is who you are. You did this because of you. I know some of us, sometimes they turn it around and say, it's because of you, it's because of you. No, 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 no. We're grown. We're not 10 years old anymore and say, well, because you, you did this, I did this to you. We're grown people. We grown people. So we can't, you know what I'm saying? We can't accept, well, I did it because of you. And some of you are be taking it personal. You said that you cheated on me because I did this. No, no, you start to hold all this guilt and you start carrying all this guilt and you start to be sad and you think that it's about you. So you, you feel broken, you feel unhealed. You know how many emails I get on a regular basis? How many inboxes? Thank you so much, Carla. Thank you so much. You know how much inboxes I get? I need healing. Healing from what? He cheated. Well, he need healing. Do we look at things differently? Do, do we look at things from a different angle? Well, he cheated on me three times, so I need healing. No, he need healing. He needs his healing. Not you, him. See, the person who's breaking the law is the one that needs the saving, is the one that needs. But many of us, we just stay in places where we think, <sighs> we think it's about us. So we begin to suffer. We begin to carry people's pain. And as we carry their pain, they're having fun. They're having a blast. They're free. It's like carrying somebody's luggage while they walk around skipping. And you are in pain because your shoulder's hurt. You're carrying their luggage. 
But they're skipping, they're turning around, they're playing, they're jumping, they're running, and you struggling, you dragging, talking about, it's so heavy, somebody help me out, it's so heavy, my back hurts, because you're carrying their luggage. We are giving people a free ride. And we wonder why we're so tired and why we're just drained. We gotta stop doing those things. We are hurting ourselves. It is time to free our own selves, man. It's time to free ourselves. It is time to free ourselves. I really believe in freedom. That's why I don't come on here and I don't bash men. I don't bash women. I don't tell you the obvious things. Well, she does this, leave. He does this, leave. It means this. I tell you to free yourself. And when you free yourself, you won't deal with these things. You won't take things so personal. You won't take people's actions so personal. As a matter of fact, when you free yourself, you meet free people. When you free yourself, you will meet people who are free also. It's because you can't free yourself. You keep being in these relationships. Let me tell you why these relationships don't work. Let me tell you why these relationships don't work. Relationships don't work because the media is spreading rumors about this is what we should, we should look for somebody to complete us. Look for, find somebody who completes us. Find somebody that could make us feel. Do you notice that? Find somebody that can make us feel. No, no, no. Feeling is not, see, feeling what you want is not your responsibility. It should be your husband's or your wife's responsibility. As a matter of fact, it's be, your husband should make you feel this and that and this and, and stimulated and complete. Not you, your husband. No, so you've been living your life or this life for, for the past 60 years and you can't develop the ability to feel free, to feel beautiful, to feel strong and completed. So he who you just met, if you go on two or three dates with him and he can't make you feel that, then no, he ain't the one. Think about it. Think about what I'm saying. He, he not the one. And this is why we can't have relationships these days that last. Because you know why? We are dependent. Thank you, um, Ivorine. We are dependent on someone else to bring us that feeling. We, to bring us that experience. Hey, Sherry. To bring us that reality. We are, so now, somebody got to come stimulate our minds. Come stimulate my mind. If you can't stimulate my mind, I don't want you. Seriously. If you can't stimulate my mind, don't want you. We're looking for, we're looking for people who are educated, who are spiritual, who are strong, who are financially able, who are ed degreed up, who are this, and they look like this, and they have this energy. Why? So that we can feel something. Only when we meet that, we can feel. Ain't that something? Because God forbid, God forbid that we can actually feel on our own. Hey, Ruby. God, God forbid that we can actually develop our own chemistry within ourselves, using our thoughts, our perspectives, our feelings intentionally to create that energy within us so that we can feel free. No, I need you to make me feel free. And this is why it doesn't work. Each of us is following these people on YouTube and Facebook and TikTok guidance. And now if he don't do this, you don't want him. If she don't do this, she, because you cannot, you don't have the ability to create your own feeling. You are dependent on an outside creation or an outside manifestation so that you can feel. This is the wrong way to go about creating relationships. Because you are expecting too much from one person. You are. Nobody should be able to do that for you. Nobody should do that for you. Listen, if I come, to, if, if I come in your life, I want to I wanna keep carrying my stuff. I want to keep doing my stuff. I want to keep experiencing life the way I experience life. And you should keep doing how you're doing it. You shouldn't expect me to come and change your life. That is your job. You are 30 years old. You are 40 years old. If you, don't, if you haven't figured out how to fix your own shit, how to create your own shit, and how to set your own shit free, no one else should, you shouldn't expect nobody else. How are you going to want me? What's up, um, Don Samba? How are you going to want me to stimulate that shit that you call the mind? See, we don't think about these things. But it sounds good on social media, don't it? It sounds good on social media. I want a man to stimulate my mind. I want a woman to bring me peace. That shit is your job. 
See, when you find these things on your own, you are free. So therefore, whoever you meet, you, you ain't got to hold them to that high of an accord that you think that they are not good enough. Everybody is good enough. They are not good enough because they don't meet that standard of stimulating your own damn mind. This is your mind. You know, all, you know, all these years, all these years, all these years, right? Here's the problem. What you experienced, all this time, what you experienced, what you tasted, what you seen, what you done. My girlfriend, she disrespected me two minutes. Hey, Kelly, do, do it. You got her, man. You got her. Listen, seriously. All this, all this stuff that you have experienced, all this, all this, all this movies you watch, all this music that you listen to, all this pornographies that you did, all the sexual experience, all this, all that, all the cursings, all the movies, all the experience, everything that you heard, you touched, you taste, that's all stored in your mind. All the abuse, all the trauma, all the relationship stored in the mind. And you expect somebody to come and stir that pot up. You expect somebody to come and stir it up to stimulate that. How? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you expect somebody to come and stimulate all that garbage that you put up here? Everything that you put in your mind, you listen to all the gossips, the disrespect, the hate, the, the programmings, the, the, the chatter, the words, your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences, your past, your abuse, your trauma. You want somebody to come and stimulate that so that you can feel good? You can't, so you can't stimulate that to feel good on your own. You want somebody to come from the outside, stimulate their own self, and then stimulate you. And then you say, if you can't stimulate me, you're not good enough. How crazy does that sound? Do we think about that? What if he wants me to come to my country and I'm not financially stable and he's wealthy? What should I do then? If he wants me to come to, if he wants me to come to his country or your country? Listen, if he wants you to come somewhere and you're not financially stable, then he should bring you there. He should pay for your ticket. He should buy your ticket. If you're not, I mean, you're wasting your time. Hey, Joseline, how are you doing? But seriously, we, want, we expect somebody to come and stimulate our minds for us because we can't do it. Because we can't be happy, so make me happy. We can't be at peace, so you make me at peace. Listen, we can't be this, so hey, if, you, if we can't do this, if I can't do it myself, I expect my man or my woman to do it. That's, that should be illegal in all countries. If, you don't, if you're not financially stable and he's wealthy and he expects you to pay for it, then you are with the wrong guy. You are talking to the wrong guy. That means that's a booty call. Don't, don't waste your time, um, ex. Don't waste your time. You waste your And you know, so these questions right here. Let me, let me explain something to you about these questions. A lot of you have these questions because you know why? Something feels off. Something don't feel right. Something feels completely off. It doesn't make sense. Right? And if it doesn't make sense, it's because you are confused. And when you are confused, you realize that the reason why you are confused in a relationship is because there's nothing there to be sure about. Because it's, it's a confusion, it's, it's unknown. If it's, if you, a lot of times, if you are confused, it's because there's nothing there. If somebody wants you, one thing that you will know, one thing that you will know is this, you'll know. If somebody wants you, you know. If somebody loves you, you'll know. But when they don't is when you are confused. And how are you confused? You are just confused. You don't know anything. You don't know where you stand, what you're doing, how, what, what are we? Do you even like me? Do you want me? You're confused because they don't. If you have to ask those questions, listen, for your mental health, take those things as a no. He don't want you or she don't want you. It's not just him, her either. Seriously. For your own mental clarity, your own mental health, those mixed confusion is a no. They don't want you. That, I'm, I'm telling you, when somebody wants you, oh no, shoot. Well, I, when, somebody, when somebody wants you, they let you know. You know, they'll, they'll, and you know what though? When somebody wants you, see all them efforts that, the efforts will be put in. And when somebody is not doing much efforts, it doesn't mean for you to try harder. Let me tell you something, right? If somebody is not putting in efforts, it doesn't mean for you to try harder. It means for you to get the hell out of there. That's what it means. 
That's what, that's all that means. If somebody is not putting in the efforts that you think that they should put in. And I, listen, I ain't talking, listen, some of you are women, sometimes you all don't want to put in effort to because you think a man should do all the efforts himself. No, it's not, that, that, that's not the case. This is 2024. If you want a man and he wants you, it should be mutual efforts. All oh, these stupid games ain't, ain't working. These stupid games don't work. They really don't work. They just, <laughs> they, they just bring you along for six months without, before you realize this shit ain't working. All these games ain't working. They, ain't, they really ain't working. It's called relationships. One of the biggest things about relationships, why we keep ending up in these broken relationships is because we don't know. We don't know how to read energy. Hey, um, Eliandra. We don't know how to read energy. We really don't. We're confused. We rather hear words. What do you think about the message out there that single mothers are not dateable? See, I don't really do that male and female nonsense. That's just stupidity. I'm t listen, I ain't gonna lie, man. That male and female garbage that's going wrong, people bring fear to you because they say these things and these things get, it sounds so ridiculous that everybody start to spread them and social media start to carry these things. Single mothers ain't dateable. Well, single mothers, you know, got pregnant by single fathers. I mean, hell, men get, they ain't get pregnant by themselves. So I, I don't, I don't understand. It, it's, listen, these men and this woman stuff that's going on, this bashing, this men and women separation crap, you are missing the point. You don't, don't focus on that. You, you can't, fo you can't put your energy, because I'm telling you, wherever your energy go is where your, wherever your focus go, your energy flows. Listen, uh, listen, if a man wants you to come to his country or your country and he asks you to pay, you ain't got to do, you ain't got to do anything. You ain't got to say anything. It's not, it's, there, there's nothing there. If you're telling me that he is rich, right? If you're telling me he is wealthy and you are broke and he want you to, he want, he expects you to come and you pay, there's no communication needed. There's no way how to put anything. There's just a, there's nothing there. A man is not serious. He's joking. He's playing games. So don't hurt your head trying to come up with the best explanation. You ain't got to explain anything. Because if I, if I say, listen, if I'm talking to you as a man, I'm 40 something years old. If I meet you, I say, listen, we've been talking for six months. I would like you to come to my country or whatever. I say, listen, since I would like to come, let me pay, for, let me buy you a ticket. When day, what day would you want to come? If I know that you are not financially stable and I know I am, but if I don't bring up me paying and stuff, what are you worried about? What are you trying to break down? Or what are you trying to explain? Explain nothing. That man don't want you. He's not taking you serious. He, he wants you to come over there, get your, uh, you know, your, your, your ass revved up and send you back home on your own money. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't even worry about that stuff. Seriously, don't even worry. I think we'd be put... Listen, I'm telling... Listen, listen. This is why I keep saying. This journey... This journey is to free up space in your mind. It's to free up all that stuff. We have too much stuff up there. Hey, Kimia, we have too much stuff going around. Like these things going around. You got to learn to free yourself by removing all those questions. You got to know when people don't want you. When people don't take you seriously. Remove them. We need to free up space up there. That's why we are so hurting. That's why we are so tired and drained. Because we're carrying too much stuff around. Everywhere we go, we're carrying all this. Well, what if he doesn't do this? What if she doesn't? It's too much. When you have to ask those questions, a lot of times it's because it's a no. Seriously. When you got to ask these questions, it's too much. We got to be honest with ourselves. We got to be honest with ourselves. We got to realize that it ain't that hard. The truth is, relationships ain't that hard. They're really in the heart. Find somebody who likes you. Don't just find the ones you like. Find somebody who likes you. Seriously, find somebody who actually likes you. But no, that's not what we want to do. We want to find the ones who we like. I like him. I like her. That's the one I want. And then you got to prove yourself to that person. The one who already like you, you ain't got to do shit. But breathe. Process. I think I could learn so much from it. Thank you, Carlotta. Listen, I have a, a, a website. Um, the link is in my bio, I believe, that you should book, uh, book a one-on-one -on -one with me. If it being so clear, find someone. Who, I'm, listen, I'm telling you, find someone who likes you. Find somebody who likes you. You're trying to find the ones that you want. Somebody who likes you will fulfill all those things that you want. 
about a guy dealing with their ex, possibly having sex, but once you're wrong on me. Listen, so hi Kirk, what's your thoughts about a guy dealing with their ex, receiving money, communicating, possibly having sex, but wants you around and to make you their girlfriend. Well, he wants two of you. He wants you and them. That's my thoughts. Now, the question is, can you handle that? If you can't, cut it out. Let people, listen. If I'm dealing with a woman who wants this man and who wants me, and I know this, listen, you keep that man. You, keep, you stay over there. I don't want no confusion. Listen, I'm, free your minds, people. Set people, learn to set people free in peace. You see, listen, you see all these feelings that we be having, all this heck. Can you all hear me still? Can you all hear me? Am I still alive? I think my, my phone is going off. Let me know if y'all can hear me. Okay, good, okay, good, okay, good, thank you. Thank you. Okay, listen, free yourself. Free yourself, thank you guys. Free yourself. You see all these things that's going on with all these people have, if I'm talking to a woman after a few months, uh, and don't get me wrong, I, I think people should date multiple people. But when you talk about dealing with that, listen, my energy, I don't want nothing mixed up with my energy. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have, I don't want to sleep with you and then you sleep with someone else and then the energy is mixed up and then you sharing that with me. I don't want that. No matter how much I like her, listen, I could like you and leave you alone instantly. I don't have no desire. I don't have no pull. I don't have no strings attached. I could like you and leave you alone. The thing is, many of us, we can't like people and leave them alone. We, when we like somebody, we, we have to have them. Seriously. Thank you, Joy. I think many of us, our issue is... Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone. Our issue is when we like somebody, we think that they should belong to us. We should, listen, find somebody who likes you. Find somebody who likes you. Can I explain something to you guys, man? Can I explain something to you guys? I want to get something very clear to you guys. Because I, I don't think we see things from this perspective. Can I, say, can I say something to you guys, man? Life is about being free. We don't want anyone. Facts. Life is about being free. Many of us have someone that we love. Currently. And that person don't love us back. And in that dynamic, we are struggling. So I'm taking a talk break to free myself, even from family. I love them, but I'm leaving them alone. So sometimes you gotta do that. Kimmy asks, Some, sometimes you gotta do that, man. I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm gonna tell you a fact. And I want you to open your minds and listen. Because many of us, I get inbacks all the time. I'm talking to a guy or a girl. I'm with them. I love them, but they don't love, I don't think that they love me back. But I love them, so I can't leave. Deserve to be entertained. If someone likes you, you don't owe it. Facts! Facts! So let me explain this to you guys. Many of us have someone that we love well, they don't love us, and we know that they don't love us because the way how they keep doing us, the things that they keep doing. Let me tell you about something, right? Many of us, I keep hearing women especially, or men too, I, I speak to men too, and men be telling me, but I love her, man. I can't leave, I love her. Listen, love ain't got to do shit with leaving. Seriously. Here's the issue. Here's the issue. When you love someone, when you give love to someone, when you give love intentionally to someone, let me explain something to you. Let me tell you how this works. When you're giving your love to a person, understand. Can we understand one thing? That person is a representation of the universe. What, what does that mean? That means that person is a representation of the entire universe. That means that person is connected to every single being in this world. So when we get... Am I gone? Am I breaking up, y'all? Man, what is going on? Can you hear me? I think my stuff keep... I don't know what's going on with my, my, my connection. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'm at the, um, I'm outside, so maybe that's why. I apologize. What's, where did I, where did I, um, where did I, you know, leave? Or where did I stop? 
What's up, Alien Power? How are you doing, man? How are you doing, bro? I'm back. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So, let me say this right here. Many of us have somebody that we love that don't love us back. Okay? We have somebody that we love, but don't love us back. They're not breaking up. Oh, I'm not breaking up? Oh, breaking up. Okay. Okay. So, many of us have somebody that we love, but we don't, they don't love us back. Let me tell you about this right here. Every one of us is connected. Right? I, I, I want us to know this right. Every one of us is connected to someone. I mean, to everybody, because that's what we are. We are connected to each other. When you, just because you think that you're giving somebody love, you're giving love to that one source. Don't think that it comes back from that one source. See, love don't always come back from the same thing that we give it to intentionally. Because when you give love, you give love to the entire universe. You give love. Your love goes out to whoever can acknowledge it, whoever can interpret it. Whoever can internalize it and whoever can recognize it, it goes out to every single one and the one who recognizes it, it sends it back. They notice you, you notice them. Listen, let me tell you this right here. Some of you all are stressed out because the one that you love ain't loving you back, you guys back. Let me explain this. Since everything is connected, once you give love, love is a universal energy, it's a universal frequency. When it goes out from you, it goes to whoever who can recognize it because they carry it and they notice you. Your love will not come back from everyone just because you give it to them. Understand this, please, because everybody is connected. So just because you give it to this one person doesn't mean that it's his and you should be hurt and you should be angry and you should be miserable and stop loving because this one person ain't giving you back your love. Listen, I'm telling you right now, it is impossible to love the wrong person. It's impossible to love the wrong person. It's very possible to expect it from the wrong person, though. Let me say that again. It is very impossible to love the wrong person because every person is connected. Everything is connected. But it is very wrong. It's very, it can be very impossible to expect it from the wrong person. It's very crazy Again, every one of us is connected. When you give a homeless person money, do they give it back to you? Does your money come from a homeless person? Every, every time you give your money to, the, to pay bills, do the bills ever give you back your money? See, what you give things to is not who you get it back from. Does that make sense? When you give a homeless person money, they probably can't give it back to you. That money will come from somewhere else. Someone else. It will come from somewhere else in the universe because the universe is connected. Everything is connected. Everything is one. I want you, I want you, I want you. Please, I want you to understand because remember, this life is about perspective. Many of us are hurt for no reason. Many of us are hurt because we're looking at things differently. We're looking at things from one angle. Hold on, let me let me block somebody, man. Y'all, y'all need to y'all, well, y'all some bored some bored people, man. <laughs> Sorry. Can you all okay? Make sure y'all can hear me now. How can you detach fully and not give in after they reach back out after cutting them off? So pretty brown eyes. Let me tell you this. How can you detach fully? Hold on, let me go back to what I was saying. When you give love to, the, to, one, to a person, understand, give love happily, give love freely. But when you give love, if you're loving coming back from the person that you're giving it to, open your eyes. Open your eyes and pay attention to who it's coming from. I promise you, whatever goes out must come back. Whatever goes out must come back. Listen, the Bible said it. Every book said it. Life says it. You said it, your mother said it, your grandfather said it, your gr everything that goes up must come back. Love is one of those things. So I'm telling you, when you give love, and you know you're giving love, know that it's not coming back sometimes from that one person that you're giving it to, or that you think that you're giving it to, because you're not giving it to the one person, you're giving it to the universe, because love is yours. Love is, a, love is an, an internal experience. When you give love, the entire universe benefits. The entire universe is begin to rejoice. The entire life begins to rejoice because you are giving love. That means you are elevating the entire universe. That means you are building onto whatever is already built. So, so understand this. When you give love, it must come back, but sometimes when you open up your eyes and see 
You will see who is coming back from. Because it must come back. Some of you all think that you something's wrong with you. Something is wrong. I'm broken because they don't love me back. Because it's not coming from the person. But look and see who is coming from. Pay attention. When you pay attention, you will see exactly who is able to give it back to you. And that's the ones that you focus on. Sometimes you got to make a decision that breaks your own heart but frees your damn soul. Some of you all don't want to make that decision. I'm hurt. I want to go back. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. How can I? How can I? Listen, cut the childish shit out. <laughs> cut the childish shit out. That is true to Oscar. That, that is true too. He says the love that you receive might not look like the love that you want to give. You're right. That's my transactional minded, huh? So, pretty brown guy said, how can you detach fully and not give in after? Listen. Listen. Um, let me tell you how. Let me tell you how can you detach fully and not, go, not fall back in that trap. Let me, let me tell you why. Can you finish this sentence? Can we finish this sentence, okay? Can we finish the sentence? Here's the sentence. I'm, I'm going to say... Um, I'm going to give you four words. And after I give you four words, I want you to finish what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm about to say, okay? This is how, if you know better, how do you finish that word? How do you finish that sentence? If, you, oh, when you know better, if you know better, finish. Can somebody finish that statement? Thank you, Reagan. You do better, right, Asuka? You, you, you do better. That's it. See, you don't feel better. See, it's not about if you do, if you know better, you feel what you should do. It's not, see, the, 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 the key of awakening, the key of enlightenment is not about your feelings. The key is not if you know better, then if it feels good, do it. That's not what it's saying. This is not what it's saying. It says if you know better, you do better. Stop, focus on what you feel and focus on what you know. If you know somebody ain't right, if you know you're going to get hurt, if you know the same thing happens again, why do you still do it? Because you don't want to learn because the truth is what you are rejecting. The truth is what sets you free. Not what you feel. The feel a feeling keeps you bond to something. The truth sets you free. The feelings keep you Feelings are lying to you every day. I feel like I can't leave. I feel stuck. I feel like I miss him. I miss her. Listen, it's not about what you feel. If you know better... You don't feel better, you do better. After feeling, do better. And when you, when you start to practice that, uh, um, when, you, when you begin to practice that, know better, do better. It becomes simple. Your feelings become detached. You just can't detach yours. How can I detach and when he comes back, I don't want to do it. Because you know better. Hey, Roddy. When someone shows you who you believe, you believe it. But some of you just keep going through this, doing the same crap because it feels good. The sex feels good. Oh, let's do it again. But I, I'm going to hurt next time. What the hell? <laughs> Don't hate the feelings. Listen, the, the truth is the feeling is your body. It's just your body. It, you know, have you ever had um, ice cream? If you had ice cream, you realize how ice cream tastes. You begin to like ice cream. Ice cream tastes good. You know what the ice cream feels like. So your body, so when you see it, you, you remember it. And sometimes you feel it and you are drawn to it. You make your way to ice cream. It's, it's just a feeling. But no matter how you feel about the ice cream, if you know that you're not supposed to eat the ice cream, you don't do it. You drink water. You drink water. Hey, Tracy, how are you doing? Oh, hey, Tracy, how are you doing? Seriously. You, if you know the ice cream is not good for you, then leave the ice cream alone. But the truth is the body is going to crave what it craves because the body knows what it knows. The body feels what it feels and the body misses what it misses. The body likes what it likes because the body is programmed to feel like and, you know, and remember. That's what the body does. The body remembers. Listen, let me tell you how the body does because I don't think we, we, we get this. I want you to look at your hair. See, see your hair? Do you see your hair? Bless up yourself, Tracy. Bless up yourself. Do you see my hair? I guarantee you, my hair, I got my hair from my great, great, great grandmother. I'd never even met her. But how did my body remember her? How did my body remember her? Look at your eyes. Where your eyes come from? Where that big old nose, where my big old nose came from? 
My great, 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 great grandmother on my father's side had a big old, big old nose. I never met her, but my body, re my DNA, my memory, my body remembered it, and it brings this big old nose on my face. I don't even know where it came from. I look at my mom, she don't have it. The body re remembers. Does that make sense? Again, this is, all about, this is all about being simple. It's all about knowledge. It's all about perspectives. The body would always remember. Can you all hear me? Because you all stop talking. I want to make sure that I'm not off again. Can you all hear me? Am I still live? Oh, Lord. I hope I didn't lose. Um... Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. So I, I guess I'm not. So I guess you all can hear me. <laughs> I really stopped expecting a certain kind of love from my sister. It really, really liberated and got to let it go. Yeah. Listen, the love that you expect from people, it's, it's supposed to be from you. The love that you expect from people is supposed to be from you. It's not people that you expected it from. It's from you. Let me say that again. The love that you expect from people, that's from you. Because it's crazy to think that somebody should or somebody owe you a certain type of love. Ain't that crazy? To think or assume that somebody owes you that type of love. That somebody should give you this or else. The love that you want, man, is a love that you need to give to yourself. Thank you. The love that you desire the most is because you need to, because it's your, listen, let me tell you all this. Here's the secret of love. Here's the secret, okay? Here's the freaking secret. Love, I said this all the time. I've said this many times, okay? I've said this many times. If I put my hand on your shoulder, can you feel my hand? If I put my hand, invest in you, facts. If I put my hand on your shoulder, can you feel my hand? Can you feel my hand? Do you think? Let me remove this person. People are bored, man. So if I put my hand On your shoulder. The, the, the truth is you can't feel my hand. You can only feel your shoulders. You can't feel my hand. You can only feel your sh shoulder. I could feel my hand. I can't feel your shoulders. If I put my hand on your shoulder, you can't feel my hand. You can feel the sensation in your shoulder. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> you can feel... What, see, what you can feel is a sensation in your shoulder. You can't feel my hands. It's two different entities. It's two different, it's a, it's a separation between my hand and your shoulder. But you can feel a sensation in your shoulder. You can't feel my hand. Same as love. The same as love. If I love you, you can't feel my love. You can only feel your love. You, it's only your love that you experience. You can't experience my love. However, when we come in the room and the more when you have love and I have love, yes, love is elevated, love is expanded. I, Irene, you be easy. But I'm telling you, it's your love that you always experience. It's your love that you feel and it's your love that comes back. It was never their love. I don't know why we want to get rid of love because somebody left. It was always your love that you experience. It was always your love that you seek. It was always your love that you actually want. It's all your love that you desire. It's yours. It's always been yours. But you've been giving up that power away to people because you don't know how to ignite your own love. So you expect somebody to come and do it for you. You don't know how to ignite your own love or to start your own love up. So you want somebody to come and do it for you. So the more they give you good conversation, the more they spend time with you, the more they give you things and food, the more they take you out. Good night, Ivorine. You know what I'm saying? The more they, they speak, nothing's in your ears, and the more they touch you and have sex with you, then you think that is your love. No, they are starting your love up. They begin to make help you. They, they, they begin to assist you. Because listen, here's the thing. When you love, who's the one experiencing your love? Who's the one who feels good? Who's the one who feels close? If you love me, if you love me, who do, who's the one that feels close to God? Who's the one that feels empowered? Who's the one that begins to glow? Who's the one that begins to have better days? Who's the one that begins to ignore people's garbage? 
Who's the one that goes in traffic and don't even care anymore? Is the one who loves, not the one who's being loved. Is the one who loves. Be Listen, have you ever seen a pregnant woman carrying a child? Have you ever seen a pregnant woman? Have you seen a pregnant woman? People say, oh, you, you are glowing. Why do you think she's glowing? How does she glow? Who's love? Because she is exhuming a love from within for that child. It's the love that she carries because she connects to the child. And the love that she begins to stir us up, the love begins to grow. And bam, her skin begins to clear up. She begins to smile, her face, her skin begins to change because it's her love that does it, not yours, not no one else. It's not his, it's not no one else. It was always yours because she loves, because she loves. So the one who loves is the one with the power. You all don't know this, huh? So we give up our power. <laughs> we give up our power and we've been giving love for so long that we think that I don't want to love no more. That's your power. That's who you are. This is your life. This is your experience. Hey, Marilyn, how are you doing? From Philippines. Only the earth will consume you. What you consume decides when you will be consumed. Listen. Yeah, Tracy, for real. Does the mom expect the baby to feed and tuck her into bed? <laughs> that's, kind of, that's funny. But I'm telling But here's the thing about relationships. We don't turn that around in relationships. So in relationships, what we do, we are afraid. Because you know, you know why we are afraid? Because we don't know it is our love. The reason why we are so afraid of relationships is because we never realized that it was our love. We thought it was their love. I never loved like this before. I'm afraid to never love again. I'm afraid that I could never love somebody like my ex. I'm afraid that I will never love in the way that I love my ex, ex, ex. And it's really crazy. Love is, love is your choice. You can put as much love as you want. You can love as much as you want because you have to take back your power. See, many of us expect somebody to do things that makes us love them. You see what I'm saying? It's stupid. It's stupid. Listen, let me tell you how stupid that is. And we don't even recognize it's stupid because it being, it's been a program. It's been normal and everybody speaks on this. We expect somebody to come and do things that make us love. So we say, oh, you can't make me love you. Listen, my love should be easily because I should carry so much love within myself that loving you should be like this. Loving you should be a point that says, you know what? I accept you. I see the compatibility there. Mm, my love will, let me love. Because you take your own emotions and put it on people. You take your guilt and put it on people. You take your anger and put it on people. Do the same with love. Take your love and put it on people. Come on, seriously. Listen, hear what I said. No matter how much I've been hurt, I still love. Yeah, listen. You, I'm in the vein. Listen, th think about it, though, right, Tracy? Like, check this out. When we are angry, we take that anger, put it on people. Now we angry at them. It's him. We are her. I'm, I'm, I'm mad at you. When we jealous, we take the same jealousy and put it on people. When we scared, we take that same scared and put it on people. But when we love, nope, mm -mm. nope, mm -mm. <laughs> nope. Like love is special. Like love, we don't put love on people because what if person go? It's your love. <laughs> it's, it's your anger too. What if you're angry at them and they go? What does it mean? What if you hate them and they go? What does it mean? But what if you love them and they go? What does it mean? Why do you have to suffer? See, the reason why we suffer is because we don't realize what we are doing. We don't realize it. It doesn't make sense to us. We don't realize that it's stupid. Somebody give us this stupid thing, social media telling us all these things, and we go with it. It is stupid. It is your love. Why are you scared? You can't lose your own love if you don't want to lose it. But he left. Okay. Let people go, but keep your love. Let people go, but keep your love. Let them go. Hey, go ahead. You have a beautiful life with Tom or Jim or Sandy or Michelle. I have a beautiful life, but I keep my love because my love is for me. My love is what makes me glow. Now, that, why should when you go and I should stop glowing? Why when you leave, I should stop glowing? Why when you leave, I should start suffering? Why when you leave, when I'm the one who should sustain my life? See, I am responsible for this life, not you. I can't put you responsible for this. I can't put you responsible for my love or my life, my happiness. 
I can't put you responsible. I can't give you the most responsibility. You can't even, you're not even responsible for your own love. Seriously, you're not even responsible for your own stuff. How can I put the responsibility on you? This is my experience. This is my responsibility. I should account for me at all times, but we don't do that. So what? So since we can't ignite our own love, this is why I said this right here. It's good to say I love you right now because you look like you have pretty white red. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. You are hilarious. But check this out, right? Check this out. Damn, I forgot what I was going to say. You just messed up with that. Um... <laughs> are you homeless? I'm not homeless. Godfather, let me tell you what I do, man. I do, I deal with energy. And I'm very good at it. I connect to love, finances, wealth, peace, happiness. I, am, I know how to use my ability to connect to everything that I want. I'm not homeless. What happened? I moved from, um, I traveled this world. I just came back from Estonia. You all know where, where Estonia is? Oh, hey, Kat. How are you doing? Hey, Kat. Do you want to know where Estonia is? Estonia is a, a country next to Russia. Um, so I was in, in Estonia for two years, me and my family, in Estonia for two years, and we just came back last week. So we had, we had a hotel. That's my hotel right there. That's my car right there. See my car? The white car, that uh, Lincoln. That's my hotel that I'm staying at. But my kids are in my hotel room. My kids are in my hotel room, so they're loud. They're watching TV and playing their... Um, they're watching TV and playing their, uh, what do you call it? Their tablets, Roblox. So I, I like to come outside and just be free by myself. So no, I'm not, I'm not homeless. No, I'm not Jamaican either. Um, but I appreciate it though. It's not cold. It's actually, Estonia is cold. But now I'm in Georgia. I'm living the life already. Um, but I appreciate you all for asking. Oh, no, no, man. God, Godfather, you good. But it's because, so I, um, I finally got a house um, to rent. Um, I'm actually a veteran. I'm actually a retired vet. I'm actually staying on a military base in a hotel. But no, I'm not homeless, man. I'm free. But listen, man, listen. But seriously, man, listen. It is time, it is time that we take back what we have been given easily. We give up our love. Hey, Linda. That was, oh, for, oh, that was Estonia? Yeah, my kids went to school in Estonia for two years with, with my family. But I, I lived, I lived all, over, all over the world. I've lived all over the world, man. Thank you, Camille. I lived, I lived all over the world. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, I lived all over the world, man. So um, I've been in the military for 20 plus years, so I've been all over. I lived in many different countries. I went to many different... I lived in Germany, uh, uh, freaking Korea. I, I lived all over the place, man. I never really lived in America that long, though. But I'm here now. But listen, though. Listen. I don't really like talking, to, talking about myself because I think that's kind of boring. <laughs> Issue with guys wanting to talk to me about other women. What does it mean? Joy, maybe they want to be your friend. Maybe they want to be your friend. I was in the Army 20 plus years, 21 years. I'm a five-time combat vet. Five-time combat, Army combat vet. Um, they, they talk to you about other girls because maybe they just like you as a friend. You know, some people just like you as a friend. And there's a way to tell when somebody likes you as a friend from when somebody actually want to um, pursue you. When somebody want to pursue you, they ask you about you, about your family. They ask you about life. You know what I mean? They talk about deep conversation. When somebody just like you as a friend, they don't go deep with you. They just talk to you. They, they, you know, they, they return your messages. They return your texts. They don't talk on the phone with you. For, for about anything. Sometimes the conversation is just dry. Sometimes it's about nothing at all. It's about what you're eating, what you're cooking, what you, where you're going this weekend. But somebody who actually wants to be with you, hey Chantel, somebody who actually wants to be with you though? Godfather, I just came from there. That's where I was at for two years in Tallinn. I lived, I lived about two minutes outside of Old Town. About two minutes, man. That's where, that's where I was living, in Tallinn, in Estonia. <laughs> I was supply, I was logistics. But yeah, I was in Tallinn for two years, Tallinn, Estonia. I have some, fr I have some friends still there. I just left last week. 
I went there in 2022, in January, and came back last week. It's cold, but that I means a cold ass place. I just had enough. But yeah, man. But listen, let me get back into this in this room with, with these kids, man. It's good. It's good talking to you guys. I might come back live again tomorrow night or something. So if I come back live tomorrow night, I want to go deeper into this relationship stuff. All right. I want to go deeper in this relationship stuff because I think many of us having the wrong idea when it comes to relationship. I think many of us having the wrong idea when it comes to relationships. I think many of us are carrying things that somebody told us. I think many of us are carrying stuff that people told us. We are carrying things that our grandmother told us from a hundred years ago. It doesn't work now. Some things just don't work anymore. You know what I mean? You know, then I, you know, I hear people say, well, you know, this, let me, let me, let me say this one thing. I was talking to this lady and she told me, well, God is going to, um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tracy. Somebody said, God, um, God is, um, what is it? God is going to send me my man. And I was like, what? I said, what do you mean? Well, I'm waiting on God. I said, listen, God already sent you four billion men. You're just going to choose one. All this shit that you think that. You see, we put so much things on God. God is like, you, you haven't learned yet. Let me tell you this. God don't bring you a man. Your frequency bring you a man. You hear me? 76 Bravo. 76. What was that? Seriously. God don't bring you a man. Your frequency brings you a man. Your frequency bring you a woman. It's your energy. You are magnet. Listen, what you are is a magnet here on, in this universe. God ain't bringing you nothing. He already brought you four billion. Choose one. What, what, do, you, what do you want? The creator, the creator is creating shit. <laughs> Busy. <laughs> Doing stuff. Making, that, making sure that Earth and Venus don't bump into each other. Making sure Jupiter and Saturn don't collide. Making sure the black hole don't suck up Earth. Making sure... You think he's worried about who you choose to be your man? Man, come on. Drunk and drunk and I mean, come, like, see, come on, man. Four billion men. It's like God sent me four billion women on earth. What am I waiting for him for? Let me just choose one. And if it doesn't work, let me see why it didn't work and choose another one. And if that didn't work, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm going to say, okay, what did I do? What, what did I contribute to this? What do I contribute to my own suffering? What do I contribute to my own? Let me try it again. And let me do it again. Because God don't send you a job. Because when you know, you know what you do? You go for a job and they fire you. You go on the next one. They fire you again, you go to our next one. You won't say, well, God don't want me to work. No, that's not what, see, we got to stop the nonsense, man. Your frequency brings you whatever you want. Money. Hotel Telegraph? Uh, no, 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 I, I never heard about that one. No. Nah. But seriously. <laughs> seriously, man. It's, it's crazy. We, we got to stop. God going to send me. If you don't stop being hurt, realize that, that this is your love. You know, when I realized that this was my love, is when I stopped being hurt. Hurt? Being hurt again? Talking about, I need healing? You know, you know what? Why we need healing? We need healing because we don't take accountability for our actions and our choices. When I realized that this was my love, I was like, wait, hold on. So people could lie to me and I still love? People can cheat and I could still love. People can abuse me and I can still love. People can lie and I can still love. You own the hotel. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. That's in Tallinn? That's pretty cool, man. But seriously, when I realize that people can do whatever and I can still love because my love should be, condi should be unconditional. My love should not be based on conditions. Well, since you pissed me off, I stop love. What the hell? These are mechanic. Ah, okay. Okay. That because it takes responsibility of that's true, Rhonda. That's true. But love is your responsibility. So when people talk about God, I'm waiting for God to send me a man, it's because people don't want to actually experience disappointment. People don't trust their own choices and their own decisions. People, so instead of so since you don't trust your own decisions, you're gonna say, Well, it's because of the men, all the men are garbage. Or all the women are liars. So I don't trust so it's it's not me, it's them. No, you have the ability to connect to everything that you want to connect to, to the certain energies. See, because that should be your, that should be, you should be accountable for your discernment. You should have the ability to discern energies. You should be able to feel everyone who comes close to you because your energy tells you everything. You know what tells you everything? Your energy. 
Your body tells you everything. Your energy is everything. When anything comes in your... Listen, if, uh, if, if somebody is behind you staring at you, don't you feel it? Have you ever felt somebody staring at you? And you look back and somebody is mean mugging you? Have you ever felt it before? I bet you have. Have you been staring at somebody before? And they wasn't giving you no mind? And finally, the more you stare at them, they look back at you? Because they felt that you were staring at them. Have you ever done it? Yes, because energy is real, ain't it? Energy is real. You can feel every single thing. No, you don't know what you're feeling. You don't know exactly what the issue is, but you know exactly what's going on. You know exactly what's going on. So if we can pick up somebody staring at us, you tell me that you can't pick up somebody cheating or lying or somebody who ain't good for you? Come on, stop making excuses for your own discernment. It's off. <laughs> I'm serious. Stop lying talking about you didn't know. You knew. You knew. You can feel somebody. Listen, you can feel somebody's energy when they come around you. Oh, what's that feeling? Some, some, have you ever felt evil? It always look right. Have you ever felt evil, like an evil energy in the next to you, just an evil being? Because you can pick it up. That's what you do. You pick up everything. The human body and the spirit picks up everything here. Your body knows. You pick up everything. So how are you picking up garbage still? Because you know why? Because you are too in tune with your feelings. You got to learn to pick it up, decipher it, and figure it out instantly. All. All. Nero, why don't you go take a nap? Talking about this gangster stuff. Go take a nap. Why are you all, why are you all so bored? <laughs> Why do, why, do, why, why, do, why do people come on people's life talking trash? People don't have anything better to do. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yo, seriously, people be coming on people's lives saying all this ridiculous stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I'm not going to go on nobody's life to talk trash. I ain't that bored. I can find something to do with my time. I can read a book. I can watch a movie. You know what I'm saying? I can talk to my kids. Because I got kids. I can play with my daughter. I ain't about to come on nobody's life talking about playing games. Like, how old are we? I mean, how old are we, man? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just... And I laugh. <laughs> says, get on your purpose and healing for some. Man, listen. But seriously, man. Seriously. We know everything. We pick up everything. We can't keep making excuses for our our lack of paying attention. I really mess some of us up. Our oh, heads talking. Response. Take me, man. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Listen, I have learned. When I begin my awakening journey, when I begin to be awakened, and I realize, wait, I'm the one who is here. I'm. I'm. Listen. The truth is this. The truth is this. You are literally in the dark. That's what we live. We live in the dark. And our tr the truth is, our vibrations, our feelings, our body tells us everything. We turn here, we pick up this. We turn here, we pick this up. We turn here, we pick this up. We pick up every single thing. And the truth is, you have to trust what you pick up. Because that's the only way you see it. That's the only way you see it. You got to trust what you pick up. But you have to trust. But listen, the secret to trusting what you pick up is for you to take your shit and drop it off first. So that you know when you pick up something, you know exactly what it is. You have to drop your shit off. Your anger, your resentment, hey Charlie, your insecurities, your self-hate, all them questions, all them feelings, all them trauma, drop that shit off. Because that's the only way you can learn that what you pick up is not yours. See, when you're carrying those things, the anger, resentment, anxiety, see, when you're carrying those things everywhere you go, the person who comes into your life, you're still feeling anger and anxiety. You don't know if it's yours or theirs. You don't know who's, is it mine or is he or she carrying it too? You don't even know because you're carrying it too. The thing is to learn to decipher energies, you must learn to silence yours. You see what I'm saying? You must learn to silence your energy. You must learn to silence it. And when you silence yours, when you become silent, that's when you hear everything. That's when everything begins to make sense. That's when people can't lie to you, talking about, you know, you lied to me for 16 weeks and I just found out. No, you, you, you pick it up. Past conditioning uh, filters for people to see reality through and drop the... Yeah! 
I'm t- listen, I'm telling you all, man. So when in this journey, in this spiritual journey, in this enlightenment journey, that I've one thing that I have learned, I don't hold on to grudges, no anger, no resentment, <laughs> no hatred, no heavy feelings, no this, no that. I don't carry those things. I guess I keep, it's not worth it. You know, the, when the Bible speaks on you must get rid of your, bit, your bitterness, get rid of your anger, get rid of your malice, it's not because it was trying to tell you this is the way to go to heaven. It's saying on this journey, if you get rid of those things, you will get so much more. If you get rid of those things, you will pick up everything that you need. But if you carry those things, you could only vibrate so high. You can only go right here. You're going to be struggling. You're going to be in survival mode all your life. And being in survival mode, you can't really live. You just have to survive. In survival mode, you can't love. In survival mode, you can't trust. You can't be vulnerable in, in, in survival mode. Oh my God. You see what I'm saying? Many of us are in, many of us are in relationships and survival modes. Old toxic boyfriend tonight and I realize I need to drop the negative memories I picked up from the counter. Listen, Chris, hey Crystal Lee, how you doing? Man, listen, I'm telling you all, listen, them people ain't toxic. These, these people ain't toxic. People ain't toxic. People ain't toxic. Our ex ain't toxic. Our responses are toxic. People ain't toxic. Hey, Rose, thank you. Seriously, I've learned. I thought my ex-girlfriend was toxic. She not toxic. She wasn't. I was toxic because my response, the emotions that I chose to give to her was toxic. The emotions that I give within myself, the anger that I held on to was toxic. My anxiety was toxic towards me. My hate was toxic in me. My frustration was toxic in me. I realized that people ain't toxic. I realized my response was toxic. When, when I learned that, oh, Jesus, Lord, it set me free. So It set me free so much. It set me so much free. When I learned that they're not toxic, it's how I respond to them. Was to- because listen, if you hold on to anger, anger kills you, not what they did. See, what somebody say or what somebody do don't kill you. It's how you perceive it and how you hold on to it. That's what kills you. That's what hurts you. See, when somebody do this or go out and cheat, that don't kill you. What, what kills you is your own response that you hold on to, that you can't let go, that you're anger. And you, that's what kills you because when you hold on to the anger, it blocks you, man. <laughs> it blocks you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, because people, people learn how to live. People live how they live. People learn how, you know, people live how they live. I mean, but I get you though, Christy. I, 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 I get you perfect. I mean, I get you. But I'm telling you, sometimes we're going to watch over. Because when I realize this, take, wake up for themselves. Yeah. Friends with benefit for 15 years. I caught feelings. I don't know how to deal with him now. He doesn't want change, but claims love for me when I try to cut it off. He didn't try to cut it off. You tried to cut it off. You'll cut it off. Okay, okay, okay. Check this out. If I know better, again, I do better. If I say I'm done and you have feelings for me, that's your feelings. That's your, your feelings is your choice. But if I say I'm done, I'm done. Listen, we make excuses. What's your, listen, again, this is your life. It's your experience. And you are accountable for what happens. You are responsible for what happens and how it happens. You are responsible for your own feelings. You are responsible for your reactions and your actions. So if you say you are done, but you use him coming back and him sweet talking you and him trying to tell you he loves you. It's the, you, the, you are putting the blame on the outside. It is you. If you know something that doesn't make sense, stop doing it. It's that simple. Listen, the reason why we are not free is because we don't do what we know that we should do. That's it. I tell my son all the time. My son is nine, is eight years, nine years old. Son, if you know better, you do better. That's it. It's not magic. It's not skills. It's not a 10-step program. If you know better, do it. I don't care what you feel about it. I don't care if you should feel it. Listen, every morning I wake up at 5. I don't care if I slept for two hours. I don't care if I'm tired. 
I don't care if I'm sleepy. I wake up at five every morning to go to the gym because it's my commitment to myself. F how I feel. You hear me? F how tired I am. I'll figure it out later. I'll go back to nap after the gym. F what I think I should be doing instead. F me in my bed. I will get up because I knew what's good for me. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Damn it, I, when, I, when, when five o'clock comes, if I want to sleep at 2.30, doesn't make a difference. Ah, oh, I'm so tired. I don't give a damn. Let me get up and go to the gym. Because that's how you begin to trust yourself. Because when you commit to yourself, you take your words personal. See, you got to be able to take your words. You got to trust your words. See, you got to trust what you commit to yourself. If you can't commit to yourself, every commitment on the outside of you will fail. If you're not committed to yourself, don't expect nobody to commit to you. You can't. Because your commitment is conditional. If you know something don't feel right, if you know it's not right, if you know it's the wrong thing to do, and if you want your freedom, do what you got to do. F what you feel. F what you feel. I know for a fact every morning I wake up, I go to the gym. It's for me. It betters my body. I get stronger. I get more energy. I live longer. So I do it. So hey, if I, if I sit up on the phone all night, talking until three in the morning, I'm watching my time. I got two hours to sleep. I get my ass up, right? I put my clothes on. <laughs> I put my clothes on. I go to the gym. Kirk, ain't you tired? Yeah, but it's okay. That's just a feeling. It's a feeling. Stop with the feelings, y'all. <laughs> I don't know about that, Kirk. I'm, I'm getting to me some sleep. <laughs> listen, I'm, put, I'm, listen, I'm for real. Cut that stuff out with that. If you know, listen, if you are, listen, listen, you are responsible, right? You are responsible for your happiness. If somebody is coming in your life and removing your happiness, you are responsible for removing them. Is it that you remove them or they remove it? Which one do you choose? You have to commit to yourself. Yeah. You got to commit to yourself. Your first commitment is always you. You can't commit to him or her without committing to you. It doesn't work. And when you commit to you, happiness, freedom, peace, and love must be first. Not him or her. Not your husband or wife. Your commitment is to happiness, freedom, love, and peace. Nothing else. And then the person should reflect that. The person in your life should reflect what you're committed to. Listen, you don't understand that, huh? It's that simple. See, that's, that's called a relationship. But the relationships I'm talking about, first, if you don't commit to that happiness, see, we want to commit to people. And then we expect people to bring us those things. No. People don't bring us that. That's too much from, from people. That's your job. That is your, that is your business. That's discipline, right? That is your business. You have to commit to thyself. Love thyself. Bring peace to thyself and honor thyself. And when you learn to do that, anybody that comes in to threaten that is gone. It's not even worth it. I, you, 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 you still love them, but yeah, you can't be in my life. But for some reason, we have all these crazy questions. Well, what if he goes me and he comes back? Why is that a question? Why is that a thing? Well, what if, what if he left for three months and he come back? What, what, what does that mean? If, listen, something that I've learned is this. Stop letting people save you for later. You hear what I said? I want you all to hear. I want you to hear that again. Don't let people save you for later. Don't let people save you for later. Don't let them meet you at the same place where they left you. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Don't let people save you for later. You tell me you're going to put me up for later. I'm, up. I'm not some, I'm, I'm not a plate of food. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not leftovers. You gotta do, stop. Listen, if I know this shit ain't good, and you tell me, but I love you, that's your love. That's shit to do with me. <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I love you, don't leave. Oh no, I, you love me good. Watch me walk away. 
I'm wish me luck. If you love me, wish me luck. If you love me, wish me peace. And if you love me, set me free. If you love me, give me my freedom. If they can give you your freedom, they can't love you. Selfish. If you can't give me my freedom, and you know I'm not happy, and you know I'm not strong to walk away or conscious to walk away, if you can't set me free and you can't treat me good, that, that's not love. Because if I love you, if I really love you, I won't treat you crap. But if I treat you like crap and I can't let you go, that's not love. That's manipulation. That's manipulation. <laughs> Seriously. But anyways, folks, it was good seeing you guys tonight. It was good chatting with you all. I will be live on, on, on YouTube. Um, I just got a house. I got a big old house now. So I should be moving. But my stuff don't come from uh, storage until like later on this month. So when I... Um, when I get my, when I set up my, my studio, or my office in my house, I will start to do real lives, real, with a real background and stuff. So until then, you know, you are going to have to struggle with me as I give live from inside of a hotel room or out here. I hope you all don't mind, right? Because it's not the quality, right? It's, I mean, it's not the quality of the video, but it's the information, right? I hope you all, um, so I know some of my videos on YouTube, it's not the quality of what you all would expect from a professional person. But um, this, you know, sometimes you all gotta accept me for who I am right, or where I'm at sometimes, right? So I hope you all don't mind. So my video is gonna be outside a couple times, but then when I get my house, uh, when I move in with my equipment, hopefully you all would, you know, get the benefit from that. This doesn't change because of, thank you. Thank you, Oscar, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Listen, thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all for your conversation. Thank you all for your time and your energy. Thank you. Please, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel. You know, check my videos out. You might learn a thing or two. Again, I look at things from a different angle, from different perspectives. I don't look at things from the, not the, the average person who on social media talking all this hate and bashing genders and men and women. I talk about life. I talk about freedom in both genders and in, in, in you know in harmony stuff love and stuff you all have a beautiful night i love you guys i'll see you guys soon and the next time all right check my channel out hopefully you all like my my videos and i'll see you guys later peace